Men, in this video I am going to show you exactly how to write your own PT program. And why is that important, you may think. It is important that you follow a PT program because it will ensure that with such a restricted amount of time you can maximise the amount of uh, results you get. Now I know you're probably busy, businesses, kids and families. When you follow a PT program, everything you do in the gym has a purpose and the purpose of being helping you to achieve your goals. There is no time wasted whatsoever. I'm going to take you through pre-programming priorities. So what the hell is that? I'm going to basically look you in the eye and say, before you even start a program, what do you need to be thinking about? After you've tied all that down, we're then going to go into hypertrophy program. What do you need to think about with regards to a hypertrophy program? Right, who am I? My name is Paul Green. I'm a former Special Forces Support Group Operator and British Paratrooper. Over the past decade, my specialisation has been being a physical training instructor in the Army. I have trained hundreds and thousands of elite individuals. Some extremely fit and some extremely unfit, you would struggle to believe. And also, a lot of them have been in the post-injury pathway. Throughout all that time, I have had a part to play in the programming of all of these elite soldiers. When you have a very important goal, it is crucial that you follow a program because there is absolutely no guarantee you are going to get there unless you're doing this type of stuff. So, that's who I am. That's why you should listen. I have no doubt in my mind that some of you, some of you have trained for you know years, decades. Now, if your missus done something for decades and didn't see much results, would you would you be in, in favour of it? Would you support it, or would you absolutely rinse her? The reason I'm saying this, we all know, I'm not I'm not beasting women, but. They do slim fast and them other things and sometimes they don't really get any results and you're just like, you're inside you're thinking, absolutely awful that, <laughs> right? But the point I'm making is that when you're doing something and you're just winging it, you just you, there's just no way you're going to get any results. Yes, you might feel good, you might go to the gym, you might get a little bit of sweat and you might feel good, but if you have specific goals... You need to train specifically for them goals. So before we can even get to the start line, we need to talk about what are your goals? Are your goals general or are they specific? Now a lot of people, they just want to get a little bit bigger and a little bit like body weight, whatever, or a little bit stronger, or they want to, for example, another general goal might be um, to... Anyway, you get the idea. Generally, excuse the pun, people's goals are general or specific. Ideally, they need to be specific. However, I am not going to sit here and decide what your goals are. If, you're, if you have general goals, that's completely fine. So they need to be highlighted and written down because they are going to form the basis for your, all of your programme. And then you need to decide, when do you want to achieve this goal by? If you want to achieve it in two months, then your programming is going to have to be a little bit more aggressive. If you've got all the time in the world and you're not really bothered when you achieve it by, then your program can take a little bit of a slower approach. Um, going back to an example of myself, I was responsible for the training, a little bit of the programming, but mainly the training of um, people like yourself that wanted to join the army, in particular the parachute regiment. I had somebody in front of me who hasn't done any military training in their lives and then in 20 weeks time they would be starting P Company Test Week. P Company Test Week is one of the hardest test weeks in all militaries around the world. Massively famous, check it out on Google if you want. But, because they only had 20 weeks to do something absolutely crazy, <laughs> every session 
you could argue was extremely important to them being successful or as successful as possible. But if we had 40 weeks, the training would be a little bit different. Do you understand what I'm saying? So these two things straight away. Goals, how long have you got to achieve them? And do you have access to a gym? I'm not going to sit here and say that you can't um, achieve all the great things that you want to achieve um, without using a gym and just doing it body weight. What I will say is that if you do not use a gym, it will take you longer. Using a gym um, gives you options to load joints and muscles to a higher degree to maximise um, you know, muscular strength and all this good stuff. I'm not going to get into that, I'll talk about it in a different video, but yeah, body weight is okay. However, it will take you longer if you do not have access to a gym, so you have to take that into account. Um, and, and lastly, I think this is lastly, how many times per week can you train? Again, it's really important, um, and one on this, once you have decided how many times a week you can train, I will rein you in a little bit, and I will say, you would be amazed by how much you can achieve in three sessions per week. I believe if you have one session per week, it will reduce your joint pain. Two sessions per week will improve your joint strength, and three sessions per week will massively improve your performance in whatever field you desire it to. So what I'd say with this is quality rather than quantity, and gone are the days where I'm sitting here saying you need to train five, six, seven times a week. Absolute bollocks. Men over 40, three sessions a week is perfect. With that in mind, I'm not going to decide. This is your video. This is your journey. I'm just here to guide and educate throughout that journey. So hopefully you understand that and appreciate that. Okay then. So now we're on our hypertrophy block. Coffee. Coffee block. I've got a definition of hypertrophy. And as with all definitions, they fucking talk absolute shit. We've got a non-tumorous... Hmm. I thought I struggled reading that before. Um, a non-tumorous enlargement of an organ or tissue as a result of an increase in the size rather than the number of cells. So increase in size of the muscle not the number of the cells. Um, cool, hypertrophy. Right, let's get back into it. So, why is hypertrophy first on the agenda? Once I get that over there. The reason we start with hypertrophy is because you're forming, you're forming the fundamentals. It's important that you build strong, sorry, not strong, you get some muscle on your carcass before you then earn the right to then start strength training. Strength training, you're lifting more weight at more intensity, but it's important that you earn the right to do that. The best way to earn the right to do that is by starting with hypertrophy. Hypertrophy training block can last whatever time you need it to. However, my recommendation would be 12 weeks. 12 weeks of hypertrophy um, and the intensity of every set you do, you must be walking away from that thinking. That was in between 80 to 90% of my effort. So I don't know your strength levels, but that is something that you need to um, think about. With hypertrophy, the exercise selection is absolutely crucial. You cannot go and do, for example, deadlifts or movements that do not allow your joints to move, move and muscles to move through a full range of motion. So your exercise selection is really important. And I'll dig, I'll tap a little bit deeper into this. So for example, for hypertrophy, right, you need to go into the gym and you need to find exercises based on your geometry, um, your like, you know, limb length and stuff like that, that really target the muscle fibers throughout their entirety of, of their range of motion. For example, the chest, right? The chest fibers go like this. So how can you get a movement which provides balanced resistance 
all the way through. So now your chest fibers are shortening and then the extension of the fibers there. You need to fill up your program with movements like that if you are on a hypertrophy, um, if you're doing a hypertrophy block. You cannot afford to have, you cannot afford to have many exercises in there which do not have the goal of full range of motion and balanced resistance through the full range of motion. I hope you understand what I'm saying by that. The exercise selection um, will be different from individuals. Um, I've got an example here, but again, these are my preferences. My preferences are quite, I'm quite short, I'm 5'11". If you're a bigger guy, then it might be slightly different. But don't take what I say verbatim. Please, trial and error, the exercises where you really feel the muscles working optimally. And what I mean by that is full range of motion. There's going to be some exercises that you have in your um, in your program that really target the lengthened position of a muscle. That's completely fine. As long as you're aware of this exercise is me really focusing, I'm going to go back to the chest example, really focusing in on the shortening of that muscle. Okay, yeah, you're, you're, you're not stupid now. You're, you're remembering this is focusing on the shortening. Okay, but the next exercise is focusing on the lengthening. So you're getting both, but you have that awareness that the goal, the priority, is full range of motion. However, there might be some friggin' awesome machines in the gym where you just can't refuse it, and you really want to use, um, you know, half of the range of motion. But having that awareness, full range of motion is the priority. However, when you start to get fatigued, breaking it down and then having exercise that focus on the lengthening or the shortening is good as long as you're aware of that. Um, and you can really load it up and absolutely destroy yourself. Another thing with hypertrophy, straight on to the next one, is tempo. So, what is tempo? Tempo is the speed in which you do the movement. Now, think about every time you're in the gym. You are just pressing weight, you know, one second, one and a half second per rep. Like I was saying earlier on about maximizing the amount of um, the amount of uh, development you can achieve in such a short space of time. One of the main reasons I think is is because of tempo. If you go on a hypertrophy block, I want you to do this three seconds on the way down. One, two, three. At the bottom, hold it for a second. So eccentric phase. One, two, three. At the bottom, hold it for a second, and then up one second. Every rep's going to take five seconds. Now think about how much time it takes you to do a rep normally. So then could you say that you're going to get three times the amount of um, growth stimulus from every repetition? So that means you're then going to save you're then going to save that much time as well. If you're getting three times the amount of benefit from every single rep, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just highlighting that point about maximizing the productivity of your sessions. So tempo is really important in the hypertrophy block and it's something that everybody should be doing and you'll see this in the gym yourselves. You'll see the, the person who's absolutely massive over there in the corner and he is going so slow on the way down and you're thinking, Walking out. So yeah, with that, it completely changes your current perceptions of strength because you don't really care about the numbers that you're lifting. You write them down, but what you do care about is full control. And with a good tempo, it really lowers that risk of injury. And the hypertrophy block is your buy-in to strength training. So again, we're starting extremely safe and we're doing it absolutely awesome. I've already mentioned range of motion. Um, Finding movements that really give you the opportunity to work full range of motion. However, if it is half range of motion, it better be good. So, yeah, choose your exercise wisely and track in your progress. So, every session, just write down what you, what weight you lifted, um, what exercises you've done, how many reps you got, um, and then yeah, every week you will notice differences. So I'm going to go straight over here now because I feel like I'm waffling slightly. So an example session. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty with this. I'm just providing you with a bit of 
how it will actually look when you do it for yourself. So I'll let you digest that for, for a moment. So first thing, right, you're noticing the repetitions that I've, that I've provided, 8 to 12. Why is it 8 to 12? Why isn't it just 8? Why isn't it just 10? Giving you a little bit of flexibility and freedom is, is really important. And giving yourself that is really important. For example, I say dips there. You might be doing bodyweight dips, 12 of them, at the tempo that I've just suggested and stuff like that. And you might think, right, okay, probably could have put a 10 kilogram dumbbell in between my legs on that set, you know, to really, really stimulate the muscle. However, I wouldn't have got 12. So you can definitely do that. So if you note it down in your notes, done, um, done three sets of 12, probably could have went a little bit heavier. Then you're remembering that for next week. Do you know what I mean? You're remembering it for that next week. And you'll put a 10 kilogram plate or a 10 kilogram uh, dumbbell in between your legs. And then the next the next week of training, you will look forward to doing eight reps. You'll be like, fucking weighted dips. Bang. Bang. Do you know what I'm saying? So giving yourself a little bit of freedom will allow you to up the weight the next week and stay within hypertrophy rep ranges. Hypertrophy rep ranges is where you stimulate the muscle in such a way it's kind of in between, it's in between um, endurance and strength. So you get a lot of muscle fiber activation. Anyway, hope you understand that. Uh, this is a hypertrophy template for triceps. Again, don't use this. You know, trial and error yourself. What exercises do you really feel activate your muscles extremely well? Hopefully you understand that. Um, and like I said about the the reps, I'll highlight that one again. You're then on your eight eight reps of dips with weight this time. And then the next so you, you do four sets of four sets of eight. The next week you might do two sets of nine and then two sets of eight. So you're showing progression. It's not always about improving the weight that you lifted. It could be that you are how do I explain this point? You are still showing progression one way or another. You are increasing the amount of reps that you've done. You're increasing the amount of weight you've done. Or you are less achy after the session. So there's a few different ways that you can actually track progression. It doesn't always have to be the amount of weight you lifted. That's why it's 8 to 12. Um, like I said earlier on, each set should be 80 to 90% effort. Uh, and what do I actually mean by this? How can you fucking track this, right? So, what I will say, right, is it's fucking annoying. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go into this. Most people don't train hard enough. And people go into the gym, especially men over 40, 50, 60 year old, they will go into the gym and they will lift lightweights and they will do a set and it's like all about just, just getting the movements in and honestly, it's just, in the army, when stuff's pointless, and it's not really that beneficial, we just call it junk, right? In the army, with doing runs and loaded marches, we call it junk mileage. This is just junk. If you are working at 50% of your maximum effort, it's a warm-up set. It doesn't count. It doesn't count for anything. The only sets that count are the ones that are 80 to 90% effort. But like I said earlier on, how the fuck do you know if it's 80 or 90% effort? What I would say is, if you think that you could push and get an, maybe another one rep or two reps out, maximum, you're probably, you're probably about there. The reason it's 80 or 90% is that I don't want you to push for the extra two reps because I would like, I would prefer that technique and that tempo to be maintained. So another term that gets thrown around in the gym industry is technical, too technical failure. However, again, this is still not enough. Basically, I would rather you push a set a tiny bit too much than waste a set and just do another warm-up set. Do you know what I mean? So something for you to think about, you want to be finishing your set thinking, ooh, you fucker, that moved the needle. Concluding thoughts. Training power, speed, and strength as we get older is more important than 
when we are young. When we're young, we can do whatever we want, our body, no one cares. Like, your body will just absorb whatever is going on and happy days. But, like I've said earlier on, when we get to about the age of 40, our type 2B muscle fibres start to decline. Which generally means most men start training their endurance. That doesn't do anything for the problem at hand here. The problem at hand is this is declining. What are we going to do about it? Yeah, we're going to fucking get fucking some muscle on our carcass. We're going to start training our strength when we've earned the right to train our strength. Then we're going to progress that into power and speed. Unreal. That's exactly what we're going to do. And then with that, your joints will become more pain-free, more strong, and then you can absorb all the shenanigans that you have planned for the next decade of your life and then beyond. Okay. Nine out of ten people train smart. Sorry. Nine out of ten people do not train smart and hard. There's a lot of people out there that go away and do the research and um, blah de blah. This exercise is this exercise is, is is so much better than that exercise. It it increases up the, it increases muscle activation by like thirteen percent. The little nerds that research all this stuff and the best exercises are still researching while you're training. Do you know what I mean? And on the flip side of that, like I said, training hard, not many people train hard because they just they just can't see themselves in the future. And the future you, the future friggin' absolute boss of a man, do you seriously think he's still doing maintenance? Light dumbbells. Have the light dumbbells, have training at 50% effort. How has that been working for you? For the past decade. Doesn't really do much does it? So. Another point. That is very important. Recovery. Is where the growth happens. So take it friggin seriously. Earlier on. I was talking about three sessions per week. And all that stuff. Recovery is where it happens. Typically I see people are in the gym. Five, six, seven times a week. And sometimes twice on a Sunday. Doesn't, doesn't need to. If you were fucking training hard. If you were truly training hard, you don't need to go to the gym that often. So, recovery is where the growth happens. Take it seriously. Eat well. Rest well. Get a good sleep. Men, thank you if you made it this, this far into the video. It's been a fucking banger. Love doing this. Um, more educational. Just getting my knowledge out there. Good structure. A um, bit of a visual for you to see as well. Hopefully he's appreciated it. And yeah, I do this for a living, by the way. And I'm just giving it to you, just educators. So yeah, if you now have everything you need to get started, um, you know, watch this video again, uh, digest it. Hopefully you took notes. If you want me to do it for you, then just, yeah, the links will be in my, in my bio or something. So you can hit me up and I will do all of this for you and you just do but you now have everything so hopefully you enjoy it um, see you tomorrow